doing a quick video here on uh, some electrical work on my 2000 Ford Exploder and my 84 El Camino SS. Uh, a little bit different for both. But for this one, uh, I'm going to be doing some fixing of my interior lighting of my Exploder. Uh, as you can see here, they're kind of hanging here crazy. A while back, the ribbon cable type flex material broke and I just replaced it with some traditional wiring and then some LED uh, discs. And they pretty much sat up here and then uh, illuminated red the interior. And it worked pretty good for eight years or so, but I used hot glue to kind of tack everything into place. And a few years in the hot Tennessee sun and now the last couple of years in the hot Texas sun has pretty much completely melted away the hot glue where it was just falling apart this was falling into the into the lens here so i removed the hot glue uh the solder joints have kind of came loose i'm gonna pretty much what i'm gonna do for this i'm not gonna do a full rebuild i'm just gonna cut these messed up ends here solder in a little bit extra length of wiring with some heat shrink and then i'm going to re-solder these discs on and then use some hopefully clear silicone to hold them in place. Hopefully this can withstand the heat. And I'm gonna do the same to my rigged up uh, rear passenger lighting. So I actually took this uh, adapter piece here that pretty much is a bulb socket. And then I broke that off of an LED and then wired it up to two more of these uh, LED discs. And then this would just snap into the socket position and it would light up these discs. It worked great. It lasted for about eight years before, once again, the hot glue and everything started kind of sagging down on the lens. So I'm going to have to uh, just double check this and then strengthen it up with some of the silicone. All right, I figured I was going to go ahead and remove this uh, map compass console thing. And to do that, it's pretty simple. It's going to go ahead and... Uh, I already got it going here, but I'll kind of just demonstrate. You're going to open up the sunglasses thing. There's two screws, Phillips head. You remove those, and then you can reach up to the front and kind of yank down, and that comes on loose, and there's a cord or a cable. You want to go ahead and detach that cable, and then the whole panel piece uh, comes down. Um, so, yeah, this is what it looks like removed from, from the ceiling here. And I'm going to go ahead and pull this apart and just redo all this wiring here. I figured I might as well do it with some heat shrink and and, and get it looking better because I, I realize it's just, it's a pretty shoddy job from when I did it almost 10 years ago. So I'm gonna go ahead and redo this. And I'm back inside the garage and I have moved this into my garage location here so I can get a better look uh, outside of the car. And it's been a while since I looked at this uh, and it's pretty rigged up when I had it together. Uh, but uh, this is what the, one of these little compass consoles look like uh, out of the car. And what I had done is it looks like I spliced into a ground and made this kind of a crappy looking Y split here uh, for the ground of the LED. I'm gonna cut all this off. Here is my very poorly done positive uh, setup for the right and left map lights. I'm gonna cut these off. I'm gonna put in some longer wires here with some heat shrink. I'm gonna redo this with some heat shrink with some black wire so it's, uh, it's uh, more obvious. And uh, yeah, pretty much I was very limited on what I had on hand and the tools and, and whatnot when I did this the first time through. Um, so this time, um, hopefully we'll clean it up. It's still not going to be a majestic, perfect setup because this is just kind of a side project car, but I do want this to be not this. So <laughs> I'm going to go ahead and start cutting this and getting some new wire in place. Here we have the old poorly wired up stuff cut off. I got the original wire stripped down here. I uh, have some red and some black here i'm going to uh solder in place with some heat shrink to keep it protected and i'm just going to lengthen it up a little bit and get those discs in place here we have the start of the ground side uh, what i did was i cut a length of black wire 
and then I strip the centerpiece out and just expand it out a little bit so I can then splice in here to give that that Y connection. And then I'm using my little alligator clips to hold everything in place. And I'm going to go ahead and solder this joint right here. And then I'm going to slide down this heat shrink and then heat shrink it over so this will be a nice uh, connection here without any exposed wires or solder. I'm not sure what I'm going to do here. Usually I have like a paint on heat shield, but I cannot find where I put it. So I may just put something on here or a dab of the silicone to kind of just give it a little bit extra protection so it can't touch any kind of wiring or anything like that and cause any potential issues. But uh, yeah, I'm going to go ahead and get this soldered up with my trusty solder station over here. I used to have a portable one, but I'm not sure what I did with it. And I'll get some nice heat on this joint and get this soldered in place. All right, I have this piece soldered up. And here is the heat shrink I'm going to put over the connection if it uh, slides over. And just give it a little extra protection. And I have my little portable, well, not really portable since it is not battery powered, heat gun. And there we have it. So I have the ground. I uh, still haven't figured this part out, but uh, yeah, I'm going to probably trim these down. These are probably too long here. Cut it down to here, strip it down, feed it back to the other side, and then I'm going to get my positive wires soldered in place on these two things here, feed them through, and then we're going to go ahead and get these discs soldered in place. And we have one of the positives uh, soldered in. Not uh, spectacular. Heat shrinks in place. Heat it up. And we'll go ahead and knock out the other side over here. And then I'm going to push the wires through to the other side of the panel. I pushed the wires through to the front side here. As you can see here, it's kind of a mess still. I um, haven't tightened it up. I'm gonna add some dabs of silicone to this exposed uh, ground piece. And then uh, what I'm gonna do is, what I do is I mount this onto here with some silicone. Actually, it'll be like this with the uh, LEDs pointing downward. And what I have to do is, see these little pads, I'm going to have to then lay the wire on the pad and then do one negative one positive and then once it's soldered in place i'm going to then dab on some of the silicone to actually hold it in place and then i'm going to silicone the back of this and then push this into that and hopefully it holds the hot glue worked great but it can't handle the temperatures of south texas here is the wire solder to the pads on the LED disc. You wanna make sure you don't get too much heat on the disc, you might burn something out. And what I found is kind of the best is just heat up a little bit and get a blob of solder. I don't have it here, but on, the, on each pad, get a little bit of solder, uh, tin up the uh, tip, and then push them together with some heat and then let go and then hope they 
stay in place. I'm going to add a bunch of silicone on here to help lock it in place so it doesn't work loose and then prevent them from actually touching each other and stuff like that. So I'm going to put some silicone on here and hopefully the silicone holds up. I have the disc in place. I'm kind of holding it in place uh, with uh, just some weight and then I put in some extra silicone. It takes a while for this stuff to dry. Hot glue is definitely much easier to just tack everything into place, more cushion, and it just let you kind of wing it. I'm going to have to let this probably sit here till tomorrow and uh, do its thing. And then I'll work on the other side, and uh, hopefully that'll be it. And then I'll move to the uh, back portion, um, the passenger compartment. It is a couple days later. As you can see, I have used this clear silicone and kind of created a floating, almost like a mount here and here with the original uh, halogen style bulbs used to sit. Um, like I said, I did this conversion eight, nine, ten years ago. But so this is the remnants that I'm working with of the original console piece. As you can see here, I just floated these in the place of where the bulbs used to sit. It's not a great mount, but I think the silicone should hold up with the heat. Uh, it's they feel pretty sturdy. I covered any of the exposed. Uh, part of the wires and then I had a little bit here on this uh, where the ground is I should have tested this before I silicone everything in place but because the silicone and the placement and, and the solder so uh, were kind of weak it was hard to actually test it with hot glue made it easy but the hot glue did not, not last I'm going to take this out to the car including this little cover piece and I'm going to plug this in before I actually mount it and see if this lights up. Back in the exploder, not mounted up, but uh, you can kind of see I have, uh, hard to see up here, but I have the plug plugged in to have it just dangling here. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and put the key in the ignition and see if the lights come on. These are, multi-purpose they're the map lights but also uh, your general purpose uh, interior lights for the front part of the car so I have the ignition on and we'll test if the map light comes on all right so the lights do come on when I hit the map lights um, it's like I do have them <laughs> so if I turn this one on it lights up this so it's how I had it before I thought I swapped it but I guess I uh, have not and then and then this is the I'm gonna open the door so it looks like the interior lights are functional and I'm gonna go ahead and get this uh, mounted back in place with the two screws and the bottom part snapped in here is the console uh, snap back into place. It's uh, two clips up here, just snap straight straight upward into the headliner area. And I believe there's two clips back here. And then once you gotta kind of eyeball and line it up, and then you have these two uh, Phillips heads screws here that you need to uh, put into place. And then that should hold everything nice and stable. Just make sure you don't uh, over tighten break anything especially if your car is old as mine and plastics and stuff get to be a little bit more brittle and then of course you have the lens here which is this two little clips it up and I have the little uh, lens cover back in place and we have the uh, the lighting like I said of course 
you want yours to actually be directional to your thing, you're going to want to swap uh, the wiring to be opposite of what it expects. Typically, with the halogens, they just downfire. So when you turn this lamp on, this one will come on and it downfires straight on you. Uh, but if you use a directional LED like this that are actually aimed, then you're going to want to swap your positives so that when you hit this lamp, it turns this one on, which then will beam down to the driver. This one will beam to the passenger. Uh, I thought I swapped it, but I must not have. And it's, like I said, it's not a big deal. I, only, I don't really use it as individual lights. I use it as an interior light. So there we have it. And we're going to go ahead and work over on this uh, back center bulb here. And then uh, we'll double check the uh, cargo LEDs. Here is the contraption for the uh, rear passenger compartment uh, LEDs using the same discs. I uh, pulled all the hot glue off and swapped it with the silicone, which kind of just keeps any of the hot leads from touching. Um, as you can see here, I have this little circuit board piece, which is the shape of what the LED socket is. And then I wrapped some wire around it so that you'll have the positive and negative. And so when you insert this in here, it actually will close both connections to these two LED discs with the standard LED socket or halogen socket uh, in the uh, lighting housing. And like I said, I ran this also just like the front, eight, nine, 10 years, something like that worked fine, but the hot glue gave out and it started drooping down on everything. So I'm gonna go ahead and put this in place and see how it holds up and uh, if it still works. Here we are at the rear passenger uh, light housing here. Um, I actually have direct fit LED, uh, red LED bulbs in place for the directional, I guess, map lights or reading lights here and here. But the main interior light, the LEDs that you could get at the time uh, just were not powerful enough to really light anything up. And I want and I had a bunch I bought a bulk pack of these from eBay or whatever I can post up the info uh, in the description so that's why I made this kind of custom contraption I'll try to uh, splice in the video here of what I did for all this uh, it's been a while so I'm gonna have to go back through my notes but then this will actually snap into the socket here and then it should sit flush uh, inside the socket here is the rear passenger LED lights socketed in place. I added just a little dab of silicone uh, where it touches the housing here and here to help stabilize it so it doesn't droop down uh, by its own weight. It wasn't moving with the reinforcements I did on the joints, but just a little added, added protection here. I'll go ahead and uh, turn the lights on and see if they uh, come on and if they work properly. Here is the rear passenger LEDs lit up with the uh, door open and the appropriate setting. There's the front. Of course, it doesn't look very bright because it's daylight. I will record a clip uh, of evening time to kind of show. Here are the little reading lights. Which still work. I haven't done anything with those. And cargo light looks like it's worked but I believe the, they droop down as well here's with the uh, little diffuser lens uh, snapped into place I'm gonna go ahead and shut the lights off uh, so the silicone can cure uh, I don't want to run them too hot uh, before everything's kind of solidified here is the cargo light which is a goopy mess uh, I'm not sure if I can I remember I had Repair this, which looks like it's broken again, getting it out. And, and what happens is this kind of uh, goes in like this, and then this snaps into place. But since this one's been broken and repaired, I would love to be able to find another one of these replacement lenses. But I'm going to see if I can repair this and uh, get this thing not looking so, um, yeah, so rough. It looks pretty bad. But uh, yeah, that's where we're at with this.
I've removed most of the uh, hot old hot glue. This is pretty much what you're left with. Um, I have these old uh, wires here soldered on, and pretty much what this lamp is is, is some kind of uh, filament uh, tube that would go between these two um, terminals, pretty much. And so I soldered on wires, and then I had this soldered in pretty much like I did the front here and here. And that's what provided the light. Of course, this would sit uh, down facing, kind of tucked in here. And it doesn't really fit very well. Um, as I mentioned before, I bought a bulk pack of these and just was making everything work as I could. And I don't really plan on spending anything on this anyways. I'm just kind of get it retrofitted back. So I'm just going to solder this back in place. And it looks like these discs did have actually um, posts. You can see here and here that were uh, soldered onto the onto the pad and then I would solder to that but I guess on the front ones they broke off and this one of course they broke off so I'm going to do the same like I did in the front and solder directly to the, the pads here and some of the hot glue I couldn't get off but it's not going to affect anything because it's on the back side and these things don't get super hot so I'm just going to solder on some uh, probably fresh wire uh, none of these, I, don't know, I might make these work but I'm gonna solder these onto the pads. Pretty much gonna add a little dab of solder to each one of these. Add a little bit of fresh solder on the tips and then lay them down. And uh, another thing to note is this clip was broken actually for many, many years, probably 10 plus years. I'm gonna get some Gorilla Glue or something, glue this back in place as best I could. Of course, it's not gonna be fantastic, but it should hold it in place uh, for maybe another 10 years. Get this soldered up. And then, uh, yeah, we'll get it, uh, we'll have to let it sit for a day for the uh, silicone. I'm going to do some silicone in here as well to get everything stabilized and then let it dry for 24 hours and then I can get this installed. Quick solder job on this disc here. It's not, uh, not very good. It's not really, it's kind of hard to work with here. And so it's kind of blobbed up because really it's kind of hard to solder to the pads. Uh, with what I have, which is a thicker solder and uh, not really the greatest tools for this, but this should hold. I'm going to coat this in silicone and the terminals in silicone. Once the silicone dries uh, sufficiently, I'll then push this down into, um, into this light socket housing at, at an angle. I believe I'll angle it um, probably forward. Uh, just so it can spill some light outwards on the tailgate area. And so since it sits like this, I'll have this tilted um, like that down in the position. I'll tack it in place with some silicone. And then I've mentioned before, I'll get some Gorilla Glue and glue on the clip, which is this, to hopefully hold it into the headliner. And then that should finish this piece up. Add a little bit of this. Real glue, which is the only thing I could find, not really optimal, but it been better with some plastic epoxy or something to get this little, some light on it here, this little uh, piece here, but it's missing a chunk out the middle, so it's really hard to keep the level. I actually add a little silicone on the back. Once the Gorilla Glue dries tomorrow, I'm going to put some uh, more silicone down there, kind of wedge it in place. So like I said, I just need it to be able to help hold things in place i'm getting attacked by mosquitoes uh like i said this is kind of my, my long-term project car where i kind of just wing some things together have fun with it i obviously wouldn't do something quite this uh um, rigged up on my zl1 or or one of my newer cars uh so yeah we'll go ahead and let this dry i'll come back to it tomorrow but once it gets a little darker out i will uh swing outside and see how the front and the uh, mid passenger area lights look with uh, with the uh, lights currently minus the cargo here we are at night back at the exploder front and passenger rear uh, interior lights are in the cargo lights still not in it's still drying and I'm gonna go ahead and set setting so here is how it looks when it's all lit up. And it gets, I mean, it's pretty dark. Um, well, not dark, but it's pretty bright. And I went with red LEDs originally. Uh, reminded me of 
uh, being on a naval ship or on a base um, back in Iraq or something like that. When the interior, uh, they would keep red uh, lights on at night so you don't lose your night vision, I guess, was the story with that. So. And back in the garage, take a look at the status of the cargo light. It's it seems like it's uh, hardening up pretty good. And then I will maneuver this piece uh, down into the light. I want to have it tilted, I believe, this way if I can. If not, I'm just going to tilt it inward. It's not really going to matter because it does have a pretty big radius of light. And then, uh, yeah, so I'll get this finished up tomorrow, put in, and then tomorrow evening, take a look at what it looks like fully lit up. And it looks like I might have to look at the door uh, puddle lights. Looks like one of them was flickering earlier. Have to see what's up with that. Maybe have to redo the LEDs for the puddle lights. And uh, one of the bonuses of having a car that's uh, 21 or so years old, maybe 22, based on when it was manufactured, is you fix one thing, two things break, fix two things, one thing breaks, fix that thing, five more things break. I have a huge list of things I want to do with this car. It's kind of my project car that I've done a bunch of just random fun things on just to help learn various automotive um, skills, you know, suspension work, uh, some modding, um, exhaust work, stuff like that. Uh, I usually will do stuff on the Exploder first before I try to do it on something that it may be more expensive or I really want to uh, maintain it better. So I do the trial and error on the uh, car that isn't quite as expensive or important. So, yep, I'll go ahead and uh, get this uh, maneuvered and then uh, put some more silicone on here, and then we'll go from there. I have the cargo light kind of put together here. Um, it's gonna sit kind of like this, uh, with the rear, of course, face, you know, closer to me, and the front of the car this way. So I couldn't really squish the wires down in a good way to get it to situate the other way. Put a ton of silicone on here, this piece is super weak because, you know, a big chunk of it's missing. So I'm going to have to be real careful putting this into place so it doesn't break this clip. And other than that, through here, it's, I don't have any blobs on the lens anymore other than the corner here, which I had to put just to support the clip. So it should look pretty decent. Hopefully it lights up and nothing broke while I was jamming these wires in place. And we'll go ahead and take it out to the car. Here we are in the car. And I'm gonna need you two hands for this, but uh, this plug will kind of situate like that. And then I'll put it up in the headliner. So I'm gonna go ahead and see if I can get this thing to snap into place. Here it is plugged in. It lit right up. I'm going to have to finesse it into the headliner and hopefully it doesn't shatter apart and it will stay in place. Here is the cargo light snapped in place. You can see it kind of throws the light a little bit more forward but the, the roof line does uh, tilt to the back here so it helps project it upwards. But as you can see here, the cargo area is uh, quite well illuminated. There we go. Here is the rear passenger seats. Everything is quite nicely lit up. And here's the front. I'm gonna go ahead and shut the lights off to my garage and my outside and do one quick uh, last look around to see how bright this is and uh, how it looks. And back at the car, I shut my exterior lights off, but I do have a parking lamp here or a, a 
road lamp or whatever this is so it kind of ruins the effect of trying to see lighting but you can see here here is uh, with the interior lights engaged show you kind of the brightness level especially in the front it's really bright but because it is red you don't really lose your night vision um, so you don't have that weird uh, transition from the red light to darkness which is why I went with the red so like I said this has worked for years and years this is just me redoing it I found my old photos I'll be posting them throughout the video as you can see of the whole process of getting everything wired up and here we go and they shut back off so everything's working and I'll wrap it up uh, feel free to subscribe comment let me know uh, what else you'd like to see I have a lot more coming for all of my vehicles my Exploder my El Camino I'll get some light going on over here so you can see what I'm pointing at so uh, the Exploder El Camino I'm even gonna do some stuff with the NV3500 my GL1 in here and then the Echo Boost Mustang. So, anyways, thanks for stopping by. Peace.